Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. I think the key is to do what you like as long as you can. Do what you enjoy and pay attention to who else is doing it. Do activities that other people are doing too and befriend them, go over and talk to them. Find out if you've got more in common than just the fact that you're sitting on the edge of a lake throwing food to the ducks. Welcome to Thriving While Aching, a podcast that inspires and teaches you how to live a fuller life while safely managing pain. I'm Dr. Laurie Ferguson, Director of Education at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. The place that makes me feel alive is being with family and friends. For Joel, it's the great outdoors. And as he's gotten older, he's found a way to expand those great horizons. Joel, it's so great to meet you. It's good to meet you. One of the things that always interests me are the different definitions that uh, people have of thriving. So what does it mean for you in your life to thrive? Well, it's to be able to uh, do the things that I want to reasonably comfortably. I don't ask for total comfort, but just you know sufficient comfort. And is that something you live with a lot, the hurting? Well, I do. I, I was a very active uh, man for many years. I was a rock climber, backcountry skier, mountaineer, that kind of thing. And I did a pretty good job of wearing out my joints. So uh, osteoarthritis has uh, sort of attacked them one after another. And I find I can't do the things that I used to do, but I like to still do as much as I can. Sounds like you were incredibly, uh, not just active, but dedicated to being out of doors. I mean, a mountaineer, what does that even mean? Well, it means that I live in an absolutely beautiful place with lots of big mountains, and uh, they called to me. So I went up and did almost all the activities that were available in those mountains. So I did a lot of rock climbing. There are big mountains right behind uh, my house. Spent the last 50 years exploring those mountains, climbing their cliffs and uh, skiing off the edges of them. And so it's a a year-round activity. But it's not something you can do now. No, my knees, my ankles, my shoulders are sore enough from uh, doing it for a long time that I'm really limited. So I, uh, I could do easy hikes, cross country skiing and the like, but my super active years are past. But then I'm 75 years old. So uh, I had a good run. What's that like to feel that limitation or change your definition of thriving? It's frustrating to a degree. On the other hand, I have very good memories, and most of the people that I did these things with are having the same uh, issues. So we're all finding new ways to thrive as best we can together. How do you find ways to shift? A person that's been so active and now those doors are closed, you still live in these beautiful mountains, you've had to find new ways to do things. How do you do that? Well, it's a gradual process. And it's an identity issue in some ways too, isn't it? Well, that's right, exactly. I got my identity through uh, activity rather than work. I was a a computer guy for 40 years. But if people would ask me uh, what I do, I would mainly talk about skiing and climbing rather than playing with computers. And so how do you talk about your identity now? You know, it's hard to say. I do the things that I... I like to do and still have a uh, enjoyable life. And so uh, I've just dialed it back, I guess is the way to put it. And it sounds like you've kept moving. That's right. For some people, that kind of pain or feeling of limitation, they just say, well, that's it. I can't do anything. I'm, I really have always wanted to just sit on the couch, but it doesn't sound like you're resigned. No, you've got to keep moving as long as you can. So you basically do what you can while you can. These days, I spend uh, an hour, a couple of days a week with a a personal trainer trying to maintain my mobility, my strength as best I can. But right now, two hours a week seems to keep my uh, joints from bothering me too much. Ibuprofen is a good friend. Ah, a pain reliever is a good friend to keep us moving. But how do you know which one is the right one for you? My name is Kathleen Cameron, and my title is Senior Director for the Center for Healthy Aging at the National Council on Aging. 
Kathleen is also a pharmacist. She knows it could be confusing standing in a drugstore aisle, staring at a shelf, and not knowing which over-the-counter pain reliever is right for you. One remedy for treating pain is NSAIDs. These are typically the second line of medications that are used to treat pain, especially pain like arthritis, joint pain, musculoskeletal pain. These include medications like ibuprofen and naproxen, and there are also many prescription non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. Prescription NSAIDs really help with inflammation. Over-the-counter NSAIDs have warnings that they may cause severe stomach bleeding, especially if you take more or for longer than directed. You should always ask your doctor if you have any questions. Another remedy for treating pain is acetaminophen. Acetaminophen is generally well tolerated, especially if the patient has certain medical conditions. Acetaminophen is generally safe when used as directed. Patients should always read and follow the product label as risk of severe liver damage may occur if you take more than 4,000 milligrams of acetaminophen in 24 hours. And those milligrams can add up if you're taking other cold, allergy, or sleep aids, which also contain acetaminophen. Another important point I want to make related to acetaminophen is to make sure you review the liver warning, which states that severe liver damage may occur if you take other drugs containing acetaminophen or if you consume three or more alcoholic drinks every day while using this product. I asked Kathleen how aspirin is currently used with older adults. Most cardiologists do prescribe low-dose aspirin to prevent a second heart attack. So we want to use aspirin for that purpose because it helps to prevent blood clots in the heart and in the brain and helps to prevent negative consequences like a stroke. Aspirin now is not as commonly used for pain as other NSAIDs or acetaminophen. Before you take any medications, be sure to talk to your doctor. Kathleen reminds us to keep an up-to-date list of your prescriptions and over-the-counter medications, share the list with your doctors and pharmacists, follow their recommendations, and know the potential side effects of everything you're taking. Now that we sorted through all the -the over-the-counter options for your aches and pain, let's get back to Joel, who found other ways of thriving while aching. I'm also married to somebody who uh, isn't quite as achy as I am. So she's always encouraging me to get out and go for a bike ride or go for a walk. I'm very lucky I have a good support system. I'm also very lucky that I don't have any of the inflammatory forms of arthritis. I just have osteoarthritis, which is painful enough, but it's not nearly as debilitating as some of the other ones. But even to frame it as lucky, that mental attitude, it takes a little bit of work, but it pays off some big benefits. Well, it does. I've I've earned my aches and pains. Well, it sounds like you not only have earned them, they're kind of badges of honor. (laughs) Well, I don't know about that, but (laughs) but I certainly have earned them. I, I did this to myself. For many of us, as we get older, that dreaded word inertia creeps in, you know, that it's hard to kind of get yourself to do things. But what I hear is that's not really your issue. No, inertia is not part of my DNA. So what kind of wisdom would you have to offer the folks who are listening to us and wondering about their own ways to thrive? I think the key is to uh, do what you like as long as you can. Do what you enjoy and pay attention to who else is doing it. That's the real key. Do activities that other people are doing too and befriend them. Go over and talk to them. Find out if you've got more in common than just the fact that you're sitting on the edge of a lake throwing food to the ducks. (laughs) That's great wisdom because do what you enjoy is something I hear over and over again. So after the rock climbing mountaineering chapter, how did you find what you enjoyed? My wife and I uh, bike ride considerably more than we used to. I started going on canoe trips down some of the Western rivers with some old friends that were of the same mind. In our travels, what we also started doing is going on group trips. There's a number of organizations that will do all of the uh, less enjoyable organizing part. There's a group called VBT, Vermont Bicycle Tours, and we've done several week-long tours in Europe. 
We've acquired several good friends as a result of those activities. It's so inspiring, Joel, because what you're sort of helping me think about is how do we expand our horizons and not constrict? And it sounds like when something that was so vital to who you are wasn't possible anymore, that idea. So I'm going to look around and there were some things I used to do a little of, and I'm going to expand that. And you've expanded to even bike trips in Europe. Where did you go? Well, the first trip we did was a week-long trip in Portugal on the border between Portugal and Spain. A few years later, a friend had a 70th birthday and suggested that we all join her on a week-long bike ride in Provence. So we spent a week drinking a little wine and eating some halfway decent food. And Then a few years after that, another trip caught our eye in the Dolomites. So we spent a week bike riding in the Dolomites in northern Italy which was absolutely lovely. And you'd think that that would would be a killer because those mountains are so unbelievably steep. But the whole area right at the base of them are apple orchards, and they used to have trains that went through to pick up the apples. So they've turned all of those old train tracks into uh, rail trails. So you can bicycle along these trails that are, of course, not steep because trains can't go up steep things. How beautiful, how inventive. That's wonderful. At this stage, what are you looking forward to? Well, for the last uh, three years, we've already got a fully paid for trip to Galapagos Islands. And so we're going to go there next April. Oh, that'll be wonderful. And that'll be different too, because I don't believe you'll be biking in the Galapagos. Oh, no, not at all. We'll be on a small ship that holds about 30 passengers. And so we're going with our son and daughter. That sounds like a fabulous way. So again, I hear you pushing new boundaries, opening yourself to new experiences. And, you know, there may be some regrets, but I don't hear you regretful that part of your more active life was gone. You're moving forward. That's exactly right. I think a friend of mine always says, nobody ever lay on their deathbed and said, gee, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. Think of all I could have accomplished. Just a few more meetings. That never happens. And so you don't have to look back and say, gee, I wish I had been able to do that and I wasn't, so I just stopped in my tracks. You know, there's a few goals that I had when I was younger, you know, big mountains to climb or whatever that I never did. Those are minor regrets and it would have been good to have done that, but it didn't happen and and that's okay. It sounds like it's very okay in terms of the life you've created now. So thank you for being here and sharing your story and inspiring us in our ways to figure out how we can expand some of our horizons and may you continue to thrive. It certainly has been a pleasure. I've enjoyed talking with you. Thank you for asking me. We hope you found this episode and our series inspiring. We'd love to know how you are thriving while aching. Send us an email, a short video or audio clip Tell us your secret to aging gracefully so we can share it with others in our community. Send it to thriving at ghlf.org. Thanks for joining us for Thriving While Aching, a podcast that inspires and teaches you how to live a fuller life while safely managing pain. If you liked this episode, give us a five-star rating and write a positive review on Apple Podcasts. It'll help more people like you find us. I'm Dr. Laurie Ferguson. Take care. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. This podcast is made possible with support from Johnson & Johnson Consumer Health, sponsor of the Global Healthy Living Foundation.